Hey, Richard Carlton here. This is your FileMaker update for September. We have weekly videos coming, and if you give me 60 seconds, I promise I'm not gonna waste your time. Next week, we're gonna begin a series of several videos where we are providing demos, functional, operational demos, to show you how to integrate with Amazon AWS. Now, specifically, Amazon has like 152 different services, so we're picking some common things that might be popular. One of those is uploading a audio file, a speaking file, a voice speech file, like maybe a recording like this, and you give it to Amazon, and a minute or two later, back comes the text transcript of what was said. So if you had a meeting, you could upload the meeting recording and get the transcripts back. Super valuable for doctors, super valuable for other professionals who do dictations, but you want the dictations in text so you can search on them. That demo comes next week, fully operational. After that, we're gonna do an Amazon S3 integration demo, which is where you can upload big files to Amazon and then give links to people and they can test out or review the large file. So if you post a video or a image or something like that onto Amazon and you want to quickly give that person a link to check it out, kind of similar to Dropbox, but it scales much larger than what Dropbox can scale to. That's very cool. Now in about another 60 seconds, this video will start my interview with Jesse Barnum from 360 Works. This is an update on their MirrorSync product. Talking to Jesse about MirrorSync and about Amazon services, frankly, blows my mind because he is definitely swimming in the deep end of the pool with this technology. And there's some amazing things you can do with Amazon. Over and above the basic demos that we're gonna provide, there's some really deep, amazing things you can do. So we kind of touched on that a little bit in his MirrorSync file, but the conversation is much deeper about other things at Amazon. I think it's worthwhile to watch that. And lastly, our double pack promotion is super popular. And so if you're looking for our FileMaker 17 video training course, plus a copy of FileMaker Pro 17 for yourself, plus a copy of FM Starting Point Enhanced, all for one amazing low price, that's been super popular. So you can get a single pack of that or get a double pack of that and we're going to let that promotion continue because people really, really like it. A lot of savings in there. Uh, it's a good deal. So without further ado, let's jump into our DevCon interview with Jesse Barnum. Hi, I'm Rich Carlton. I'm here with... Jesse Barnum for 360 Works. Jesse Barnum is one of the most important contributors to the FileMaker community. He makes some critically, strategically important tech. Stuff that we need, and if we didn't have it... Well, we just couldn't get things done, I think, right? Thank you, Richard. I don't know what to it's say. It's all the truth. It's absolutely the truth. So every year we talk about Jesse's latest products and latest updates. There's some great things happening. This video is about a short update on the MirrorSync product that they've had for a while. Now, MirrorSync, what is MirrorSync? So MirrorSync is a product designed to sync uh, two or more databases together. So for instance, you could sync FileMaker Server with an offline copy on FileMaker Pro or Go. You could sync FileMaker Server with a MySQL database. You could sync FileMaker Server with another FileMaker Server database. And you could do any kind of mixture of them. Like, for instance, you could sync FileMaker Go with MySQL. You could sync MySQL with Oracle. You can sync all of these things together. And sync is important for a lot of reasons. At the most basic rudimentary level, if you have someone who's on a device or a computer somewhere out in the desert. Yep and they need access, and we've seen stories about this with people out in the middle of nowhere. They sync before they go, they collect data, or edit data, or review data, and then they come back and they resync to bring everyone up to date. So like one of our, one of our highest volume clients is actually, they, uh, they do emergency medical services in the state of Ohio. So many uh, EMS, uh, paramedic, firefighter people in uh, Ohio use this FileMaker solution uh, created by our client who uses MirrorSync. So those firefighters or ambulance drivers, when they are transporting a patient to the hospital, they're going in and out of wireless coverage. So they use an offline uh, solution to key in all the patient's medical data. By the time they get to the hospital, they run their sync on the hospital's Wi-Fi, and when they're wheeling that patient through the hospital, it's already in the, the systems. So that's a real typical scenario for MirrorSync. Um, in fact, that's where synchronization came from initially. But since that time, you've expanded the product to do a lot of different things. We have. So in this video, we're going to put some links down below about some other videos where we've talked about MirrorSync and how to install it and set it up, one of which was uh, kind of this idea of clustering or having one FileMaker server sync to another FileMaker server? Yeah, so we talked about that a lot last DevCon, about having being able to have uh, two FileMaker servers 
uh, and use mirror sync to keep the two in sync with each other so any change made in one immediately appears in the other and then if you're hosting those on Amazon you set up Amazon load balancing so that all of your clients who are connecting to the FileMaker database will be kind of randomly s switched between one or both of them, thus splitting your total load in half for each server and making it so if one server has a problem or goes down or needs software updates or anything like that, all that traffic can shift to the other one temporarily. It's the idea of clustering where you have more than one server helping to take care of a load. The other consideration or common situation we run into is if you had a West Coast server, maybe East Coast server, maybe yep. European server, or maybe an Asia Pacific server. And so someone makes a change in California within six or 10 seconds, that change is replicated other places. And of yeah. course, the time could be set. That was part of our demo, so go watch that video. Yep. We set the time, I think we said six seconds or something. It yep. was really cool. So those are various versions of a product that you continue to refine and make better. Yes. So what is new today? This is MirrorSync version five. Five. And yep. so what's new about this? So we've got a few things to talk about with MirrorSync five. First of all, it's not an earth shattering feature, but it's a very nice convenience feature. MirrorSync five now saves users passwords and is securely encrypted on the MirrorSync server. So that ordinarily in, 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 mirror, in prior versions, when you would close your FileMaker file, reopen it and run the sync, MirrorSync would prompt you for, for your password because it needs to run the sync as you. Right. So it needs to log in as you in order to run that sync. And it's just a little irritating for customers to have to re-enter their password. Nobody likes to re-enter their password. Sure. So with MirrorSync 5, we made it so that we now store that password securely on the server. We send a UUID down to the FileMaker file that's permanently stored that kind of represents that password. Okay. And now every time you run the sync, instead of sending a password, we send the UUID and then MirrorSync can get that associated password, decrypt it, and use that to sync with you to your server without having to make you re-enter your password. Very cool. So that's a nice, uh, nice thing to have. Yep. Uh, next thing is a little bit, I think, a bigger deal, especially for customers with larger databases. So this is the capability to do server-side initial syncs. And so uh, in previous versions of MirrorSync, let's just say that you've got a very large database and you, uh, let's just say it's got 100,000 records in it. And you've got 100 users, each of them has 1,000 records that they should have access to. Sure. The way you would do that in MirrorSync is you would save an empty clone from the server, you would give them that empty clone, and then you would run the sync as them, and then our filtering scripts would make it so that they only get the thousand records that they're so supposed the to see. So the initial sync would be kind of the big one to get everything kind of caught up initially. Yes, right? we got to load the records into their empty file, right? So that they can then start making changes and sync just you know their incremental file or record here or two there. Sure. But that initial sync can take a long time, especially if they are on uh, a cellular data connection, if they're running on a kind of, the iPads and the iPhones don't have the kind of processors that we have in desktop or server class machines. Sure. So it can take a while to insert those 1,000 or 10,000 records. Okay. So what we came up with in MirrorSync 5 is kind of just a modification of that concept. We, say, we still save the empty copy of the file, but instead of sending that empty copy to the user, we temporarily host that empty copy on FileMaker server and then we run a fast server-to-server -server sync, getting that user's 1,000 or 10,000 records out of the million onto that empty copy, which is still hosted on FileMaker server. Ah. When that finishes, we close that file on the server, and then we send that pre-populated file down to them with all their records already in it, so they're not having to do that big batch of records on their small processor over their slow connection. Obviously, they're just going to press a button and wait for it. They're not going to see all this happening. That's right. They, and they don't have to move the file themselves. Right. It all happens automatically for them. It really looks very much like the current process. So it's auto-magical. That's you what FileMaker that. file says things are automagical sometimes. That is the new official term. If automagical. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it goes from nine minutes on this one sample down to three and a half or three, 43. Yep. That That's was on an iPad mini mm -hmm. over Wi-Fi. I think the difference would probably be even more exaggerated if we had done it over a cellular data connection. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. So that's two new features of MirrorSync 5. What yep. else? Uh, so the next thing is reporting sync stats to AWS CloudWatch. Okay. So CloudWatch is a monitoring tool provided by Amazon Web Services. And we've played with this, um, and I've never really thought about having CloudWatch monitor a FileMaker process, mm -hmm. but you could actually send data to CloudWatch, and it gives you reporting and alerts and... Absolutely. Any quantifiable data can be reported to CloudWatch. You could use it to report temperature. You could use it to report number of records. You could uh, report time, uh, uh, warnings, things like that. Wow. So what I'm showing here is that 
uh, we've added this advanced notifications feature and then you can pick the particular things that you want to track. Sure. So an obvious one would be like duration. You want to know on gener in general how long it takes your sinks to run. You might also want to know if there were warnings. Like for instance, if a, uh, a record couldn't be synced because it was being modified on the server. Yeah. Uh, if you want to count how many inserts, updates, deletes there are, all that kind of stuff, you can sure. pick which ones you want to do. And then you'll get nice little charts and graphs in CloudWatch like this showing you, uh, you know, this is a real client uh, doing a MySQL to FileMaker server to server, server sync. Yep. Uh, and you can see that at this particular moment, there's a really big spike in terms of updates. They ran, they updated 9,850 records in this sync. And so the sync took 134,000 milliseconds or 134 seconds, which is still pretty good, about yep. two minutes to update those 9,000 records. So th this is what I've come to expect from CloudWatch. Normally we're doing monitoring of a FileMaker server that's on the cloud or some sort of EC2 instance, but you yep. actually could have an offline FileMaker file. Yep. But as long as you have internet access, you can be almost like pinging CloudWatch with data of the... Well, the CloudWatch notifications don't come from the client, they come from the server. Okay. So the so the client will run the sync with the server. When the sync but is the complete, the client says, "Okay, I'm done." And then on a separate thread, so it doesn't add any time to your overall sync, the the mirror sync server will send a notification to CloudWatch saying, "I just finished the sync, and here's all the metrics that went with it." Correct. Sync. But the server could be on the LAN on your local office. Sure. Right? Yes. Right. Absolutely. And that's and, the, and so that's what I'm saying is a lot of times we think about AWS. It's CloudWatch to watch. AWS cloud stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yet, oh, I see yet what you're we're, saying. Yet we're doing, we're watching something our that's on. That's it could it can be. It has on nothing premises. really to do with AWS. It's our FileMaker Absolutely. server. This this does not need to be hosted on AWS in order to use this feature. You mm. can have a Mac Mini sitting in a closet and still use this feature. Yeah, see, that's pretty cool, right? And it once again, as we start to shoot more and more videos, and and especially talking to Jesse and some things coming up, you start to see that AWS is not just about AWS. It it pervades all parts of our lives, it's, mm. it's almost kind of insane. So speaking of AWS, that brings me to my last point to talk about. This is what actually blew up my brain. Uh, we were talking about this before we shot the video, and I need an IV of saline and, and sugar. My brain has exploded. Calvin, can you help me with that? I need a little <laughs> EMS moment here. Hey, I think there's still some chocolate over there. Yeah, I know, I got poured in. <laughs> so the, the basic concept here, and I'm going to try to explain this for normal people that are not like Jesse, is that FileMaker through MirrorSync can synchronize data through to Amazon's DynamoDB, which is a platform. It's a database system, but it doesn't work like any database that you would know normally. Yes, it's, it's very alien. It's very alien. It, it works differently. The ideas of tables are kind of a little weird and different, and fields are definitely weird and different. And But the idea is that what it really good at is it's scaling. So everyone knows that Amazon scales. So when you do a request and you talk to an Amazon server, it's not really one server in someone's closet. It's hundreds or thousands or however many servers they have. And so your request can go a lot of places. And so you can have a DynamoDB that scales that does something great, like say if you had a 20,000 people that were going to hit your website immediately. Yes. And, and so FileMaker couldn't handle 20,000 immediate simultaneous people. It would explode. But Amazon could do it easily because those 20,000 people would be accessing 1,000 servers or 500 servers yep. or whatever it is. It spreads it out. Dy DynamoDB allows you to have a database that spreads over servers. So that's, that's one side of this. Yes. Then we have FileMaker, which makes for a great reporting system, ad hoc, uh, data mining. Yes. But incredibly so, flexible, but tool. it doesn't do like 20,000 people simultaneously. That's right. So it's built have, more for it's optimized more for flexibility than it is for scalability. And so the and trick Dynamo was DynamoDB is the opposite, right? And so the idea, of course, is then we need to sync the data, and that's what you did. That's what MirrorSync 5 adds is one of the, the, the uh, key features is this ability to sync your FileMaker tables and records to DynamoDB tables, and once they're in Dynamo. They could be accessed at, for all practical intents and purposes, unlimited amounts of scaling. So, if you've never heard of DynamoDB, I'm pretty sure you've probably used it before because when you shop on Amazon.com, you're actually accessing a big DynamoDB database. Well, let's talk. So, let's make even more, more specific. So, there's this thing called Prime Day where Amazon does like free shipping yeah. and super amazing deals, and everyone goes on there and does. It's like a Black Friday for Amazon. Yep. Yeah. And 
Amazon scales and generally handles a load pretty well, yes. right? And so how do they suddenly have a million people? So you had 13.9 million operations per second. Per second. Not during the day or not over a month, but per second. I can't really comprehend Noth nothing that. Nothing comes close to that. I, I don't, yeah, I don't even, I, it, for Fuss and FileMaker, you, you measure that in, you know, hundreds or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, you know, and, and FileMaker's fast for yeah. a lot of things, but we're talking like half the planet shopping on Amazon. Yes. Simultaneously. That's it's, not the world of FileMaker, but it would be cool if FileMaker could talk to that. So MirrorSync lets you indirectly take, basically create web applications that can have thousands, tens of thousands, millions of simultaneous con connected users, which you could never do natively in FileMaker, but you can do by extension by syncing that data up to DynamoDB. So we use this in a real life case um, where, where it was a school registration system and there were going to be 40,000 people logging into this database within 30 minutes of the time that it opened. That's a pretty heavy load. Yeah, yeah that's a big load. And so uh, for this client, we set up a very formalized test process where they actually scripted the typical operations that a user would perform and then they contracted with a benchmarking company that specifically just does this service ah, okay. to simulate that process and then run it as if 5,000 simultaneous people were doing it at the same time. Wow. And what they found is that using our web application, the speed of 5,000 people was exactly the same as one user. Wow. So there was essentially no performance degradation no matter what you threw at it. So this is some pretty radical stuff from my perspective. I've been doing FileMaker for a long time and, and, and talking about things in the ways that we can scale in an unlimited way. Frankly, I'm still kind of comprehending it. You've just finished a project over the last six months with that. That's amazing. So what I want to do is say thank you and this is awesome. Now, if I want this tech, mm -hmm. how do I get not so much DynamoDB because mm -hmm. we can go on Amazon and learn about that, but yep. how do we get the sync tech for FileMaker? If you've already purchased MirrorSync for, you're going to get this already for free. Uh, if you, uh, and I would highly recommend that people renew their maintenance, you know, to get MirrorSync 6 when it eventually So let's comes talk out. about that. So, so Jesse's being very modest here, but he has a portfolio license, which basically gets you kind of everything, yeah. right? All yeah. of Jesse. So if you want all of Jesse, <laughs> <laughs> then it's uh, $1,900 thereabouts. I'm very cheap. You're very cheap. $1,900. <laughs> uh, it's a the one time purchase that, but then it's an annual maintenance fee of about 25% of that. About 25%. So, mm -hmm. so it's a pretty good deal. I know that we use that. We use a portfolio license. I'm very glad we do because we use all sorts of 360 Works products. And this one actually kind of it hurts my head. Now, as part of the portfolio license, you get, what, 10 connections or 10? Yeah, you get 10 client-to-server devices. So some of the server-to-server -server stuff that I'm talking about here is not part of the portfolio bundle. Okay. What you do get with the portfolio is you get all of our products, including 10 client-to-server devices for MirrorSync. So 10 iPhones, iPads, laptops. So if whatever. you have a deployment and you have questions about whether the portfolio license is right for you, feel free to reach out to your team. Absolutely. And In they're going to find you. box at 360works.com, and we will reply to that. You can also buy MirrorSync a la carte. You don't need to get the portfolio license. Okay. So you can buy individual devices. The prices range from $40 to $95 per device, depending on the quantity that you're buying them in. Uh, and the server-to-server -server syncs start at $1,600 per server pair and kind of uh, go up from there. So like a DynamoDB sync, for instance, is $1,800 for a sync between FileMaker Server and DynamoDB. Yeah, but theoretically, you just need one of those because right. the Dynamo is going to... That's right, and that's a one-time purchase. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, you know, we've tried to keep our licensing very simple, especially for the server-to-server -server stuff. That makes sense. Well, I greatly appreciate it, Jesse. So once again, this is Richard Carlton. I'm here with Jesse Barnum, 360 Works, one of the most important product developers in the FileMaker platform. Thanks visit a lot. Their, yeah, visit with their website at 360works.com. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, guys.